metric units of length. Just like in our customary units video, we're going to use benchmarks to help us estimate or choose the best unit for each of the uh, units that we need to know. We have four, millimeter, centimeter, meter, and kilometer. So let's go through and talk about the size of each one. A millimeter is the size of one tiny little dot on the board. If there is a dot here, it's very hard to see. Um, a benchmark that you can use is the width of the tip of your pencil. Very, very small. For a centimeter, I have drawn a one centimeter length line right there. And you might find on your hand that the width of your pinky finger might be close to one centimeter. For a meter, it's very close to the same size as a yard. And on many adults, it'll be from the, your shoulder to the tip of your fingertips. So you might have, it might be a little further on you. But um, remember, in class, we have the meter stick. And it, it, for, it goes about from my shoulder about to the tip of my, the tip of my fingers. A kilometer um, is big like a mile, and if you think about a, a football field and a track around the football field, it's a little bit more than two times around the track. So it's less than a mile, about, about half the size, but it's a little bit more than two times around the track for a kilometer. So if we are having to choose the best unit of measurement, of a metric unit of measurement, from say for example Lynchburg to Richmond, of course we want to use kilometers because it's the longest one and it would take us several hours to drive to Richmond. If we were thinking about the length of a tick, um, kilometers is too big, meters is too big, when we get to centimeters, um, if you think about the size of a tick, you very rarely find one that's as wide as your pinky. If you, get, if you find one that big, you've got a serious problem. So they are small, which means that you would use millimeters as the best unit to measure most of them. And then finally, the height of a house. Um, again, that's a really big thing. A house is really tall, but your house is not the um, length tall or the height of two times around the track. That's too big. So meters would be the best unit to measure your, the height of your house or a, a house. And of course, I have a song. It sounds much like the customary unit song. It goes like this. Um, for millimeter, we're going to pinch our fingers together like this and make a teeny tiny face, like a squinty face. Millimeter. Centimeter, hold up your pinky to show the width of your pinky. Meter, point to your shoulder and hold your arms out. Meter and kilometer because we can run a kilometer. Okay, let's try it. Millimeter, centimeter, meter, kilometer. Millimeter, centimeter, meter, kilometer. Millimeter, centimeter, meter, kilometer are the metric units. The um, metric units are related, and we're going to talk about how they work together. In all metric units, there's one sort of base unit, and so in length, a meter is the base unit. Everything else is figured out based on the meter. So let's go smaller first on this chart. A centimeter, it takes a hundred centimeters to make a meter, okay? And you can think about it like a, like a fraction. A centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, that was a pun. Because cents, uh, if you think about a dollar, there are a hundred cents in a dollar. So there are, it helps us know that this, this prefix means one hundredth of something. So there are also a hundred centimeters in a meter. If we get even smaller, we'll go up the chart, we see millimeter. It takes a thousand millimeters to get to one meter. So on this meter stick, there are a thousand tiny little lines. The, the, the tiny little lines in between each centimeter are millimeters. If we look at one centimeter, there are 10 millimeters in each centimeter, or 10 little pieces in between each centimeter on the, um, on the meter stick. A millimeter, this prefix, milli, means one one thousandth. So a millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter. There are a thousand of them in a meter. So we've gotten smaller, now let's go the opposite way and get bigger. This prefix, kilo, means to take, take a thousand of whatever your base unit is. So one kilometer is gonna be a thousand meters. So if you're gonna run a kilometer, 
you're going to run a thousand of this length. And so again, the prefix kilo means to take a thousand of a meter, or multiply um, a meter times a thousand. And I'm hoping that these prefixes sound a little bit familiar to you, milla, cent, and kilo, possibly. Think about we studied a liter, and a milliliter is what comes out of a dropper, a teeny tiny, a teeny tiny drop of, of liquid. And that means that a milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. So it would take a thousand milliliters to get to a liter, just in the same way that it would take a thousand millimeters to make a meter. And then when we talk about mass, a gram is our base unit. A milligram would be one one thousandth of a gram. So little tiny specks of something would um, have the mass of a milligram. And then if you take the gram and multiply it by a thousand, you get a kilogram, just like you have a kilometer here. And a kilogram is one thousand times a gram. And I don't know about you, but I think that the, all these relationships in the metric system are pretty cool. So let's practice finding equivalent, me equivalent measurements in the metric system. If you have um, a length of five meters and want to turn that into centimeters, just like we did with customary units, you can draw a model to solve each one of these problems. So I've drawn a line and broken it into five pieces, each representing one meter. And then I'm going to think, how are meters and centimeters related? What do I know about that relationship? Well, one meter is a hundred centimeters because cent is a prefix that means a hundred. So this one's a hundred, this meter's a hundred, this meter's a hundred, and this meter's a hundred. So we're doing five meters times a hundred centimeters in each one is going to give us five hundred centimeters, or you could just add all those hundreds up. So we know that five meters is equal to five hundred centimeters. Next, if we had 3,000 meters and wanted to know how many kilometers that was, we could draw a line and think about how do I know, well, how, what do I know about how meters and kilometers are related? Well, I know that 1,000 meters is one kilometer. So I'm going to draw 1,000 meters and another 1,000 meters, which would be 2,000 and another thousand meters, which would be three thousand. That's all that I need. Now I'm going to count the kilometers. One, two, three. So what you were doing here was taking the total of three thousand meters and dividing it by the amount of meters that's in one kilometer and you got a total of three kilometers. Next, if you have four centimeters, that would be four of the widths of your pinky and you wanted to know how many millimeters were in that four centimeters, you could draw your four centimeters and then write the relationship that you know. I know that there are 10 millimeters, 10 teeny tiny pieces inside each centimeter. So this would be 10, this would be 10, 10, and 10. 10, 20, 30, 40. So there are 40 millimeters in four centimeters and you did four times 10 to get 40. Now here's an extra for you. You might see this again in science or uh, maybe even in math class. But sometimes you don't have even uh, multiples of, um, of centimeters or even millimeters. So here's a problem with how to, how to solve that. If you had 187 centimeters, you might draw that on a number line and know that it was bigger than 100 and less than 200. So this would be 100 centimeters would be 1 meter and this would be 2 meters, but it's not all the way to 2 meters. So we can say that this is 1 and 87 out of 100 meters here, in this, in the, uh, 87 out of 100 centimeters in this meter. So we made that into a fraction, and we know we can find an equivalent decimal. More, and more often when you see metric units, it's going to be written in decimal form. So you can change 1 and 87 hundredths into the decimal 1 and 87 hundredths of a meter. So we would say, and this is way, this is more preferred over saying 1 meter and 87 centimeters. This is the format that you'll see much more often.
so finally let's practice using a metric ruler first of all just like with the customary of the inches um, ruler you want to make sure that you figure out where zero is on our ruler here remember I've sort of zoomed in um, we see these this long line that means one and another line that's the same length there that represents the zero we would know it was the zero even if that zero wasn't there because of how long it is so this is telling us start here don't start at the beginning of the ruler and next we need to think about what are the units many times you'll see rulers that'll say cm for centimeter and it'll be really obvious but sometimes they write mm millimeter right there and, P and students get confused well is this a millimeter is this a millimeter and you just need to think about your benchmarks. You can find the centimeters by finding the piece that's about the width of your pinky. So even if they write millimeters, know that that means the teeny tiny pieces in between each centimeter. And this is still a centimeter ruler even if you see this unit. So now let's measure two objects. We're gonna measure one to the nearest centimeter and then one to the nearest half centimeter. So I have here a piece of paper and I'm going to make sure that I line it up with the zero mark which is right there. Remember, don't put it at the end of your ruler, right there. And if I want to measure to the nearest centimeter, I'm going to think, it. I see first of all that it's between one and two, but it's way closer to one. So that is um, the nearest centimeter, the length we would call it one centimeter. Even though it's a little bit over, it's closer to one than it is to two or than it is to zero. So measure to the nearest centimeter, this piece of paper is, we would just call, one centimeter. Now to get a little bit more precise, you might be asked to measure something to the nearest half of a centimeter. So let's try that with this. I'm going to line it up to the zero to the zero mark and then I'm going to come way down here and see that it is between three and four, which we can't see. And then I have to think about where the half centimeter marks are. So this would be one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, and this three is six halves. So even though it's not a half mark in between two whole numbers, three holes is still a nearest half centimeter. So this two is closer to this mark, which is a half mark, than this half mark right here, three and a half. So I'm gonna call this three, even measured to the nearest half centimeter. So this tube is three centimeters, and we can kind of prove that we're measuring to the nearest half centimeter by thinking about this like six halves, which would simplify to three.